You know? Everyone always associates cold exposure with hopping in a bath full of ice, taking that body-shocking freezing shower, or walking into a fancy cold air machine that costs $17 a minute. It's freaking freezing in here, Mr. Bigglesworth. But what if all you really had to do to get that desired longevity boost was turn down the thermostat a little bit each day? I mean, sounds pretty reasonable, right? But just in case, tomorrow's underwear skiing is still on. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. Today, we are once again exploring the magical powers of hormesis or the phenomena of how a slight physiological stressor on the body elicits a beneficial system-wide adaptive cellular and metabolic response and making the organism more resilient as a byproduct. A phenomena that is straight up evidence for the old adage, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Turns out a lot of these adages we've grown up with end up being true. You ever try an apple a day? So the hormetic topic of the day is cold stress and specifically how it may be yet another tool that packs a longevity boosting disease fighting punch. This time, specifically around cancer, which I think we'd all agree. We'd like to patty the batty in the octagon if we had the chance. So first we'll talk about the known benefits of ramping up your internal metabolic winter and getting a little cold. Then review this new research highlighting how cold temperatures, not exposure, can help fight cancer. And finally finish up with practical ways that you can apply this in your own everyday life. And why combining it with other healthy habits is likely good for biological business. Something I like to call the health compounding effect, but we'll get to that. So sweats off, comfy socks too, and let's start cooling down that internal vibe. Cold exposure and the longevity hypothesis. Since we love looking through the lens of longevity across every topic that we cover, let me introduce you to the metabolic winter hypothesis, a topic that we have a full video dedicated to right here. This is the theory suggesting that there is a relationship between calorie scarcity, mild cold stress, and sleep that may explain the increasing prevalence of modern day metabolic disease, as these were all commonalities for which we humans faced throughout evolution during the winter months. Think about it, limited food supply with longer periods of fasting, cold weather with increased need for internal heat production, and longer nights accompanied by more rest and preservation of that increasingly scarce energy. This theory argues that during these tough times, our bodies, the survival machines that they are, upregulate pathways that would preserve the cellularly strong and sacrifice the weak, putting itself in the very best position to hunker down and make it to April showers and May flowers. These challenges nurtured a cellular environment which allowed only the strong and efficient to survive, essentially simulating a metabolic winter within. An internal state that we can intentionally replicate by incorporating certain health interventions into our everyday life. One of them being getting a little cold. And here's why modern science says that may not be a terrible idea. Let's explore. First, it's been associated with the upregulation of AMPK and sirtuin pathways, similar to strategic fasting. And these pathways have been associated with many survival mechanisms, one of them being protecting and repairing DNA, kind of important, improving mitochondria function and mitochondria biogenesis, aka the creation of new mitochondria, and turning on in-house cellular recycling and clean up programs, most notably autophagy. Okay, pretty good start, but what else? It's also been shown to manage and reduce longevity liability numero uno, inflammation, while providing a mood boosting endorphin rush, with some data suggesting that it stimulates the release of in-house pain relieving opioids and cannabinoids, assisting with mood regulation, 
reduction of anxiety, and further enhancing a feeling of overall well-being. Yeah, but Kev, what about... I know, I know, we can't keep going until we talk about everybody's favorite topic, which is actually super relevant in regards to the data that we're about to cover. Fat burn. Cold exposure has been shown to upregulate fat metabolism as a mechanism to produce heat. This is a process called non-shivering thermogenesis, where the body essentially converts very inactive white adipose tissue to beige or brown adipose tissue, and doing it by increasing mitochondria density and function, and thus increasing heat output and warming the body without shivering non-shivering thermogenesis. Get it? Pretty cool, right? But despite all this, we may be overlooking the coolest effect yet. Time for the new data. Cooling off cancer, the data. Researchers out of Karolinska Institute in Sweden sought to see how cold temperature exposure affects the growth and prevalence of cancer cells. To do this, they first leveraged an animal model to tease out mechanism, and then observed what effects seem to translate over to humans. And you're definitely gonna wanna see what happened there. But first, the mice. My dude. This study compared tumor growth and survival rates among mice with different types of cancer when exposed to cold versus warm living conditions. And they looked at some of the most prevalent types of cancer plaguing modern day society, colorectal, breast, and pancreatic. So to do this, researchers implemented different types of tumors across several groups of mice and split them into living conditions of either 30 degrees Celsius or four degrees Celsius. And for my non-Celsius peeps out there, that's 85 degrees Fahrenheit and 40 degrees Fahrenheit. A literal depiction of summer and winter up here in the Northeast. Okay, it gets it gets colder, but, and warmer. It's actually middle of summer now, very hot. Anywho, throughout this experiment, researchers analyzed markers in tissue and used imaging to examine both cellular reaction and glucose metabolism. So what happened? Well, it was first observed that the mice acclimatized to the temperatures of four degrees Celsius had significantly slower tumor growth and lived nearly twice as long compared to the mice living in the temperatures of 30 degrees Celsius. Damn! And when they looked into the underlying mechanism driving this, they found that cold temperatures triggered significant glucose uptake in brown adipose tissue, while at the same time reduced the glucose availability for those sugar-hungry tumor cells. And as we know, cancer cells usually have high glucose requirements to grow. Now, researchers took this a few steps further because of course they needed to tease out if this was really being mediated by brown fat activation and not some other mechanism. So they removed either the brown fat or the protein necessary for its metabolism, a protein called UCP1, in a subset of the mice. And you wouldn't believe what they found. The beneficial effects of the cold exposure was essentially wiped out and tumors began to grow at a pace on par to the ones that were at higher temperatures. Whoa. But I got a question. Say we gave the mice a Slurpee while they were in the cold room. What would happen? What? what? They they looked into that? With a, oh, no, not, not with a Slurpee, with a sugary drink. Close enough. Interestingly, when researchers gave another subset of these mice a high sugar beverage, which we know from a lot of other videos on this channel are not cool for biological school, it canceled out the effects of cold temperatures and restored tumor growth. Yikes is right. Now, I know what you're wondering because I'm wondering the same thing. Does this translate to humans? Let's find out. Here, they recruited six healthy individuals and one cancer patient undergoing chemotherapy to see first 
if brown fat was activated simply by temperature controlling rooms, and second, if it did anything for slowing the progression or activity of tumor cells. To do this, they exposed the healthy individuals to a slightly chilly room temperature of 16 degrees Celsius for up to six hours per day over a two week span, while the cancer patient spent time in a room of 22 degrees Celsius for a week, and then a room of 28 degrees Celsius for an additional four days. So, did they find anything cool? Using PET scanning, researchers identified a significant amount of brown fat activated in the neck, spine, and chest areas of the healthy adults wearing shorts and t-shirts in that slightly chilly 60 degree Fahrenheit room, and interestingly increased brown fat and lowered glucose tumor uptake in the cancer patient when they were in the cooler of the two rooms. Pretty cool, but we also gotta be real. Although interesting, the human sample size was just way too small to provide any conclusive data. That being said, it certainly provides some preliminary hope and groundwork for future research to explore how this may not just be a cancer fighting therapy, but potentially a cancer preventing one too. Especially when incorporated into a sustainable longevity routine because I know we all remember the power of health compounding interest. By now, you guys know why I am so bullish on healthy habits. And if you don't remember, it's because the data suggests that the more you invest in cultivating them, the bigger the longevity boost one seems to receive, relatively speaking, of course. And we've covered this very phenomena across several videos, clearly showing that mixing the powers of daily movement high quality sleep and real whole nourishing foods drastically improve one's cellular health and longevity and more than any individual habit on its own, acting literally like compound interest in the cellular and metabolic bank and thus increasing your odds, likelihood and probability of health and prosperity over the time frame of years to decades. A beautiful thing, right? And I just can't help but wonder if adding a little metabolic winter here and there can take this longevity party to the next level. So here are some ways to incorporate cold exposure into your life. First, as we saw in this new data, sometimes all you really need to do is turn down the thermostat a little or open a window for a few hours on a chilly day, just enough to where you are a tad bit chilly, but not overly cold. And although more data is definitely needed on this, it seems spending time in temperatures below 60 degrees Fahrenheit could be beneficial in recruiting and activating brown fat and thus elicit that beneficial cellular response. So making a conscious effort to controlling your temperature for a few hours a day could be a strategy well worth it. Now, this certainly doesn't mean that all other cold exposure hacks are off the table as a daily or weekly routine, which includes a few minutes of a cold shower or a nice five to 20 minute dip in a ice bath or cold body of water can and have been shown to be beneficial. And you know, cryotherapy if you wanna pay $17 a minute, up to you. Seemed like a good number to go with. The moral of the story here is don't feel like those are your only options to get a little cold. As we saw today, these staples of cold exposure may be supplemented by non-bone shivering nervous system screaming methods. Although they're fun, there may be another way. And all this being said, I must remind you like we always do that no one habit is a silver bullet. Point in case today, showing the benefits of cold exposure can be quickly canceled out by a poor lifestyle choice, like drinking a Slurpee every day. And while cold's cancer fighting powers were on full display in the data today, I wanna remind you that none of us wanna get to that point, right? We wanna use this intervention and all of the other ones we talked about as a recipe for prevention a recipe that has us operating efficiently at the cellular and metabolic level, not only preventing disease onset over time, but feeling effing awesome in the here and now. A clear win-win if I've ever seen one. And if you need a little extra help building your winning formula, you can join the weekly challenges in Patreon, where we as a team implement longevity-focused sustainable change week by week, habit by habit, focusing on getting healthy from the inside 
out. If interested, all of the links for that will be in the description below. And with that, I only have one more message I wanna leave you with. If you plan on attending tomorrow's underwear skiing extravaganza, which is still on, don't try and see if your tongue sticks to the ski lift. That's too much cold exposure. And you might be there a while. Just saying.